Okay, so Parsha Shir, Parsha's Vayelech, um, as uh, scheduled, we are doing a very short Parsha Shir because the body, the main Shir tonight was the Halacha Shir. Um, but uh, just a few couple of ideas on Parsha's Vayelech. Um, we, shouldn't, we should go into Shabbos at least uh, armed with a few ideas, a few thoughts. Parsha's Vayelech is the shortest Parsha in, in the entire Torah. And this year it's a single Parsha, so it's uh, sure will be quick uh, on Shabbos morning. It's only, I think, 30 Pesukim. I know of a case here in the community, I think we once I mentioned to you, that there were, you know, you talk about who mitzvah boys, but mitzvah boy triplets shared Parshas Vayelech. It does not get better than that. Right, that's 10 psukim each. <laughs> uh, give or take, I don't know how they cut it, but uh, it does not get better than that. You know, you think of your matas masi. Um, there you go. Okay, so lots going on in the parasha, albeit it's a small parasha, but an interesting feature in the parasha is the transition of leadership. The Pasuk says, Vayelech Moshe, Vaydabis Hadvarim Ho'ele Kal Yisrael, Vayom Aleim, and he says Moshe Rabbeinu is coming to the end of his 40-day speech, of his very long speech to Kal Yisrael, which started, of course, in Dvarim. And he says, Ben Me'a Ve'esrim Shana Anoichi Hayom, I'm 120 years old today, Lo'yuchol Oid Lot Seiz Velovoi, I'm no longer able to go in and out, not that he's not physically able to, as we, you know, as, as Rashi points out, but he's not allowed to. V'Hashem Omar Eli Lo Yisav Rezei Adin. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says that I can't go more, I can't be across the Yardin. HaShem Elokecha Hu Eve Lefonecha, Hu Yashmin Esagoyim Ho Eile Mefonecha, etc. Yeshua Hu Eve Lefonecha, Kashi Debar HaShem. But Yeshua is going to take over. He's the next leader in Klad Yisrael. The question is, why Yeshua? Why did Moshe Rabbein? There were lots of other people who were potential candidates. There was Pinchas, there was Kolev, uh, there were other people who could have stepped up. Why was it Yeshua, HaKadosh Baruch Hu told Moshe Rabbeinu that Yeshua is going to do it? So, an interesting Medrash. The Medrash says, Yivkod Hashem, that later the Pasuk says that Moshe Rabbeinu, well, it was actually in Pashas Pinchas, that Moshe Rabbeinu, when he's told he's not going to go to Eretz Yisrael, he said HaKadosh Baruch Hu should choose. Ma ro'a levakesh adova hazer, ach haseid nachlas. Now that request of Moshe Rabbeinu, when he's told he's not going to go into Eretz Yisrael, his instinctive response was, who's going to look after Klal Yisrael? It happened straight after the parsha of B'nai Slavchot, which is the parsha of Nachalos, of uh, the inheritance, how to divide the land, and the whole parsha of inheritance. Uh, there's a, there's a parak in Baal Basra called Yesh Noichlin, where all the, all the laws of how you bequeath property to the next generation, Yesh Noichlin, it's based on the psukim in Parshas Pinchas, which is just, pre, just before this psuk, pasuk of Yifkei Tashem. What's the connection? When the daughters of Slavchad inherited the portion of their father, Omar Moshe, Moshe Rabbeinu said, Now, maybe I should ask again, Maybe my children should inherit my position. And Hashem says to Moshe Rabbeinu, No, that's not, that was not my intention. Your children weren't as dedicated in the base of Medrash as Yeshua. Yeshua Harbesh Sharoschot, he served you a lot. And he gave you tremendous covet. And he was the one who went to the base of Medrash early and late. He was the one who waited after Shul and put away the Sidurim and put away the Chumashim and cleaned up the Beis HaMedrash. Since he served you with such dedication and with such, uh, with such effort and energy that uh, he will be the one to take over your position. So the answer is that it's really the humility and the dedication of Yeshua which won the day. Now that explains a uh, Gemara in Bab Basra. The Gemara says in Bab Basra, Daf Ayin Heyom Adalaf. The Gemara gives an analogy. Pnei Moshe kpnei Chamo, pnei Yeshua kpnei Levana. Moshe Rabbeinu was like the face of the sun, and Yeshua was the face of the moon. What does that mean? The answer is what the Gemara is referring to is the total self-effacement of Yeshua. The sun is the source of energy. The Levonot merely reflects the light of the moon. So that, re- that represents the total humility of Yeshua. I, there's nothing here of myself. I'm just sort of transmitting the brightness, the leadership, the qualities, the Torah 
of my Rebbe, my Shabbeinu. So the Levana that represents total self-effacement, and it goes more than that, because the Medrash says in, in the Pashas Vayichi, at the end of Pashas Vayichi, when they're giving the brachas, it says, We sing in Hamalach. The Pasuk says, Mi sheshmoi kashem hadag, benoi ma machnis in aretz. Moshe Rabbeinu is compared to a fish, says the Medrash, because he was taken out of the water. Kiminamai mishisihu, I took him out of the water by Paran's daughter. By the way, he was born on the seventh of Adar. Adar is the muzzle of the dog. That's why you go into shuls in the whole month of Purim and you see pictures of fish on the wall because it's the muzzle of the month of Adar. And therefore, the fish, Moshe Rabbeinu is born in the zodiac, he's compared to a fish because he was taken out of the water, and he was born in the muzzle of the month where, where the, the figure is the fish. He, Machnis and Laaretz, he is the one who's going to take you into the land. And Nun Beno, Yeshua Beno, the Medrash carries on. What does that mean? We know that Yeshua is called Yeshua Ben Nun. So he's called, and by the way, in Aramaic, in, in the Gemara, Nun is a fish. So Yeshua ben Nun is like the son of Moshe Rabbeinu. So you see that he's become so attached to his Rebbe that he literally is called the son of a fish, which is a reference to Moshe Rabbeinu. So you see that Yeshua is the, the, the total humility and the total dedication of Yeshua. That is really what earns him the right to take over from Moshe Rabbeinu. Now, that comes, it's a double-edged sword. Because if a person is very humble, more often than not, it doesn't always need to be the case, he lacks the ability to stand up and to be that sort of uh, vigorous and confident leader of Klal Yisrael. Now, it doesn't, it's not a contradiction. Moshe Rabbeinu was, and he was on of Mikhail Adam. But sometimes if a person has that trait of humility behind the scenes, self-effacement, Pnei Yoshua, Pnei Levona, then sometimes you lack the qualities to be the leader. So now let's look at the next uh, paragraph, the next box. Vayikra Moshe Yeshua. What advice and what was his concerns and what was his blessing to Yeshua? Vayikra Moshe Yeshua. Vayomer Elov le'ine kol Yisrael chazak ve'ematz. He says to Moshe to Yeshua, chazak ve'ematz. Those famous words: be strong and be uh, be be uh, vigorous. Ki ato tovo es ha'om hazeh el ha'oretz. You are going to be bring the people into the land. Asher nishba Hashem lo veseichem lo says lohem. Now, there's a Meshe Chochma, it's a very nice Meshe Chochma on this Pasuk, which I once quoted uh, in Parshish before, but I'm adding, I try not to repeat, but um, I want to add, because I saw my brother in law Sefer, Jeremy Finn Sefer, he says a very uh, nice uh, addition to this uh, Meshe Chochma. Look, look at the Meshe Chochma. The Pasuk says that Moshe Rabbeinu said to Yeshua, Chazak ve'ematz le'ene kol Yisrael. Says the Meshe Chochma, al derech tzachus, the king himself is commanded not to become arrogant. So the king of Yehuda, the king of Tal Yisrael, he would get up from his throne, he would hug and kiss him, and he would say, Ovi, Ovi, Rebbe, Rebbe, Murray, Murray. That's what the Gemara Maka says. But when would he do that? A king has got to be a king. There's a certain majesty. You can't be Michael, you're covered. The Gemara says that a Melech Shemachal Kavodai ain't Kavodai Machal. He's not allowed to, with, to sort of forego his honor. A parent can be Michael, they're covered. A Rebbe can be Michael, they're covered. But not a king. The answer is, it was Betsina. In the privacy of his own home, in the, in, without being in public, then he's allowed to. But when he's in public, a king is not allowed to forego his honor. Why was Shaul HaMelech, the first king of Jewish people, why was he punished? That's what it says in Shmuel, you may be humble in your own eyes, but that's not the job of the king. You can't be Mechel in your covet. You've got to stand up and, and, uh, and be honored. Etc., etc. Now, that Avot, that's what Moshe Rabbeinu is telling Yeshua. Le'enei kol Yisrael, when you're in public, in front of the Jewish people, chazak ve'ematz. Then you've got to be strong, you can't be mechel, you're covered, honor is due to you. 
Loitis like but not, then you can't, in that situation, you can't behave with humility. Don't show any fear or anything, and don't show them reverence. So therefore, the brach of Moshe Rabbeinu is, we can now read it in a different light. When you're in public, you need to stand up and show that uh, kingly uh, honor that is due to a king. In private, is a different story. The, 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 the Mishnah says, in Ovis, the second parak, Mishnah, hey, when a place where there's no one to stand up, you've got to stand up, come forward, and be an ish. That's what the, post, the Mishnah of us says. Yeshua was the person. So he had to stand up. He was the right person. There was no one else. So Rabbi Finn quoted a lovely anecdote with the Alexander Rebbe. One of the Hasidim went to the Rebbe and said, everything in this world has a purpose, L'Shem Shemayim, to serve HaKadosh Baruch What role does the atheist have in service to Hashem? An atheist is a non-believer, he doesn't believe in God. So what role does the atheist have in serving HaKadosh Baruch So the Alexander Rebbe said to him the following, a very good response. He says, I'll tell you when the atheist plays a very important role. Someone comes knocking on your door, he's collecting for this, he's got this problem, that problem. So often we give a small amount and we say, Hashem Yazar, HaKadosh Baruch should help. The Abish Zal help him. At that moment, become an atheist. Don't believe in God. You get up and do it. You be the person who's going to stand up. The role of the atheist is when that guy comes knocking on your door or that communal need comes knocking your way, don't become an atheist. Don't, don't say, say Hashem Yazar, but become an atheist. That you are the person who's going to help out. It's an interesting uh, perspective. And that really is the, the message, if you like, of Yeshua. That Moshe Rabbeinu saw, he was concerned that, Moshe Rabbe, that Yeshua was a genuinely humble person. That's what earned him the position. He was the most humble and dedicated student. But that is a danger, perhaps, when you become a king. And therefore, his message to him was, Le'ene kol Yisrael chazak v'yamatz. Be chazak v'yamatz, but dafka le'ene kol Yisrael. The humility is okay in your own home, in the privacy of your own home. But beyond that, when you're in public, it's le'ene kol Yisrael, it's chazak v'yamatz. Okay, we'll leave it there.